I receive hundreds of LinkedIn connection requests per month and most of them never make it through. I literally accept only 1% of them and on this video, I want to share with you why the other 99% never make it. This is about mistakes salespeople do when connecting with someone on LinkedIn so you can avoid them too. By the way, my name is Yusuf and I'm the co-founder of the Scale Lab where we help salespeople just like you to crush their sales targets week after week, month after month. So let's get this started here. I summed up four main reasons why your connection request may fail so you don't have to repeat them. Number one, your targeting. I know it sounds obvious, but you would be surprised by how many requests I get by people who offer their lead generation services, even though I run a lead generation business myself. And that's just an example. So ask yourself, how well do you know your target? And if you're using any form of automation, do you have some irrelevant leads on your list that you forgot to weed out? Remember, LinkedIn allows you to connect with a maximum 100 people per week. So choose them wisely and don't waste your bullets. Number two, cold connecting. While clicking on the connect button is simple, actually being accepted isn't that easy. Make sure to first engage with people to build up towards an actual reason to be connected. You can think about someone's LinkedIn profile as someone's house. If a stranger knocked on your door and asked to get in, would you let that person in? But if you had met this very person elsewhere or recognized them from a billboard or else, there's more chances you'd be open to at least have a chat. I know, I know you're asking where to engage with these people. I suggest you to check out their posts. Have they commented somewhere that's relevant for you? What about their Twitter, YouTube channels, any other piece of content? Or have you even sent an email before? There's plenty of avenues to bond and it just requires some research and genuine effort from you. Number three, your connection message. There's really two schools of thought here. Some will tell you that you have to add a message to your connection request and others will just say, I never accept requests that come with a connection message. But I think that's primarily because the actual message they received is just irrelevant. For example, let's stay in touch. It might be worth it going forward. Or I'd like to add you to my professional network. I don't see any value here, so why would I even connect? My recommendation is to use the connect message to mention something specific about the prospect. And usually you can do this by having engaged with them before or notice something about a piece of content they posted or a flaw or an appreciation of their product or service. Number four, you don't have a personal brand. Every time you send a connection request, it's highly likely that the receiver will at least look at your profile. I can't stress this enough. If you're connecting with people and you have nothing to show on your profile, what are you expecting from the receiver? And I'm not talking about your work or education history, that's just the bare minimum. Are you delivering content that's relevant to your audience and that allows them to qualify you as relevant to connect with versus irrelevant to connect with. If you want some examples of helpful posts that you can use for inspiration, I left three profiles on the description of this video that I check on daily. This is just a good inspiration for your first post. Ultimately, it's about thinking about two versions of yourself. First one is repeating mistakes over and over, and the other one is making the effort to perfect their approach step by step. And this is not to scare you off, but your competitors might be doing this effort. It's really your choice. So to summarize the four mistakes you should avoid, I suggest you to move on from not knowing enough who you target to being crystal clear with your targeting, not engaging with your target audience to first start with engaging before connecting, sending generic connection messages versus very specific connection messages. And lastly, not working towards a better personal brand to actually building up your personal brand and eventually being recognized. So off you go. Use LinkedIn to your advantage and I wish you a lot of successful connections.